Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through the next question. Okay, so this question belongs to GATE CSC 2008 guys. The given question is, let R of A comma B comma C comma D be a relational schema with the following functional dependencies. A implies B, B implies C, C implies D, D implies B. The decomposition is done into A, B, okay, B, C, okay, B, D. So in this way the decomposition is done. So based on my observation B is the common attribute in all of them, right? Yes. Okay. So based on my observation as B is the common attribute and is B unique guys. So I think if we are sure that B is 100% unique, we can say that this is a lossless joint. Okay. Okay, so first of all, let us try to discuss about this dependency preserving guys. So the first thing says is a implies B. So that A implies B will be coming here. So it is a safe. When it comes to B implies C, it will come here. So it is a safe. When it comes to C implies D, C implies D will not get a chance for now. So let us underline that C implies D and keep it aside for now. When it comes to D implies B, it will come here. Okay, so now the only left out one is a D impl sorry, C implies a D. So can we do some manipulation to get this thing guys? Okay. So here we are having a D implies a C. Sorry, D implies a B. So if I write this D implies a B beside this thing. Okay. So D implies a B and B implies a C. So now transitively I can write a D implies a C. But we want C implies a D. So can we do C implies B? Please let us try. Uh, D implies a C. So first of all, sorry, I want C implies a D. So I need C on this side. Okay. So how can I get C on this side? Okay. Okay. So I think we need to think about this for a while, right? Yes. Okay. So based on my observation, so here we are having a C implies a D and we are having a D implies a B. So with that conclusion, I think we can write a C implies a B. So here C implies a B will also come, right? Yes. So using this C implies a B. Okay. So using this C implies B with the, so I think here we can again get a D implies B also. So please concentrate. Sorry, B implies a D also. Okay. So here we are having B to C, C to D, D to B. Okay. So indirectly, if we cancel this D. Okay. So just give me a second guys. So we are talking in terms of a B implies a D, right? Okay. So to get a B implies a D, is there any path? So B implies D. So at the end we want a D. Okay. Yes. So here if we cancel these two, so basically B implies a C with respect to C implies a D. We're going to get a B implies a C. So this is also possible. So if we try to combine these two, so C implies a B implies a B implies a D. So these two will cancel. So we're going to get C implies D. So this is also preserved. So with that conclusion, I can 100% say that this is a dependency preserved guys. Okay. Yes. So option A and C might be the correct answer. So now you understood, right? So how exactly we are solving it. So the approach will be in the reverse way, guys. Okay. So in most of the books, what they say is to calculate R1. First of all, they will say to calculate R1, like all the relations. They will say calculate R2, all relations. They will say R3, calculate all relations. So once all the three relations are ready, make union of them and compare with this. So that's what they say. That's the exact thing which I am doing, but in a reverse way. I'm just placing these things here and whatever is missing I'm trying to generate it in some way using these things so that's what we are doing right yes so now you understood right so how exactly you can solve it yes so now we are clear with this dependency preserving so now let us go through this last less joint okay sorry last less thing okay so if we check here so what are the keys here guys okay so here we are having a b c d right so let us start so a b c d so is a a key so from a i can find a from a i can find b from b i can find c from c i can get a d when it comes to b from b i can find c from c i can find d when it comes to c from c i can find d that's it right so from d i can find b also okay when it comes to d from d i can find b that's it from b i can find c so indirectly these are covering everything sorry b c d b c d b c d but the only first one is covering a b c d right yes Okay, so when we check B thing in terms of this first, second table and the third table, so B is having 
primary key thing right so that is nothing but our uh, super key thing so indirectly we can conclude that b could be a common attribute in all of them right because b is a particular key right yes okay so with that analysis i think we can conclude that this is also lossless right yes so most probably a should be the correct answer guys because there is no loss in this because b is a key in this particular scenario right yes okay so now i hope everyone got a clear idea with respect to this question so in the next lecture let us continue with the next question okay yes so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching like share and subscribe for more awesome videos like this thank you